name here, uh, we will just uh, uh, share some uh, brief words to introduce the panel. 20 to 25 times faster than they ever thought by December 2019, producing a migration to this form of work 40 times faster before the pandemic. In the experience of Dominican Republic, for instance, a, or a, a study from Pew Research Center analysis of 2019 data from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics reports that only 7% of workers in the United States had access to telecommuting. The uh, only who were participating in such platforms were managers and highly paid salaries. But a report from Stanford Institute of Economic Policy Research says that today 30% of, uh, of U.S. labor force is working full time from home. In Dominican Republic, for instance, a, a local survey from the ICT committee of the Dominican Republic chapter of American Chamber showed a rise from 7 to 33% from small and medium enterprise. Also, a reduction of physical work from 20 to 60% by last August. August. Findings show that 85% reported being satisfied by increasing productivity by 47%. Um, I would like to introduce now a, some of the policy questions that are uh, based on our, uh, on our discussion panel, on our collaborative session. Uh, first, I would like to introduce the question about how do we uh, how do environmental issues such as natural disasters, pandemics affect the job of uh, the job market. I, I would like to introduce from South Sudan, IGF, uh, Mrs. Kennedy Bolan, um, from Panada, uh, from Panama, IGF, uh, Mr. Edias Zambrano, to discuss on their a, a specific cases that have affected the, their environmental issues in their countries. Please join me to the discussion. Are there present, Miss? Kennedy mm -hmm. says he is about to connect. He's having some issues, so maybe you can move to Abdias. Abdias, Hello. Please. can you hear me well? Hi, Abdias. Yes, please. Okay, good afternoon here in Panama. Uh, well, um, responding to your question, it just affects uh, in many ways. Uh, I will speak about the pandemic because it's, I think it's the main subject of every single, of every single session here in, in the IGF this year. In Panama, during the pandemic, some, some 150,000 to 200, 50,000 jobs were suspended uh, were suspended according to media estimates. However, it is believed that the outlook could reach up to half a million suspended workers. And that is a, a huge amount uh, here in Panama because we are only, we only have like two, three million uh, people in the, in the workforce. Because of this uh, and the massive job terminations the demand for employment has increased, but not the offer of employment opportunities, causing the workforce to dedicate itself to informal employment. The worst part of this situation, I think, being a, a young man, it's, it's borne by young recent colleague graduates who do not have the years of experience that many companies seek or are looking for. This causes uh, many people to offer their workforce for less income than legally established, creating unfair competition. Now, it is important to note that at the time of suffering the ravages of the pandemic, Panama had approved um, the teleworking or remote working law. However, it had not published the regulations to apply the law in, the, in, in March. So in the first months of the pandemic, uh, working from home was a little bit confusing because we don't have like the, the clear rules of the game, uh, to say so. And there were no clear rules. And today, even with the regulation of this law, its application has not been achieved in each company. 
This has lead, led to higher internet and electricity costs for some families because not all companies have applied the law well that obligates companies uh, to pay the intern uh, a little bit amount of the, uh, every single month bill of the internet and electricity bill. Although uh, there are not there are not situations caused by humans, the environmental situations, uh, looking for ways to minimize. Sorry for the noise. Looking for ways to minimize that their impact on work is a very important solution in the short, medium, and long term. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Adias, for sharing with us your your thought about the the situation. I see the. Uh, obviously, the, there are common issues here with uh, the telecommuting or remote work that has affected everybody, and uh, especially the remote workers needs to uh, to adopt no the energy, the the bill of the of the internet, and the laws do not regulate that. It's important to mention that in the past. A, some digital platforms has arise. So this law, the, 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 the need from regulator to, to improve the law is important because we have been accustomed to platforms such as Uber, where people do have a job, but they are usually known as an intermediary. Uh, from their services or a software company sometimes. So they not always apply to the regulations on the local countries. Uh, but in this subject, uh, many of the companies that were traditionally providing uh, services physically in their installations are now uh, provide, uh, have adopted new platforms to, be, to do this digital or remote work from people. So they are not so accustomed they only implementing the technology, but not the policies related to that. Uh, I think uh, we had a, a, a experience from South uh, Sudan, but I don't see, ah, yeah. Kennedy, uh, please join us and share with us your experience in, in South Sudan about the, the environmental, environmental issues, such as natural disaster or pandemics affecting the jobs in your country. Please. Kennedy, I see you're unmuted, but we cannot hear you. Kennedy, are you available? Um, I'm sorry for this issue with Miss Kennedy. Uh, it will be nice to hear from her, but let's uh, move on with the next subject in order to take, uh, 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 to value the, the moment we are on. Maybe she can join us in a, in a moment ago. Uh, because we cannot hear you, Miss Kennedy. I don't know if you are uh, experience and now oh yes right now thank you good good i, I was uh, having some technical error here but i'll fix that okay sure please um, mr kennedy thank you very much um this is kennedy from south sudan Asia, representing at this special uh, time uh it's been my pleasure to represent south sudan at this 2020 Asia, uh, and i know it has not been in the, uh, uh, from the day when we are we've been uh, preparing this idea because of the pandemic uh, attractions, uh, which has not been easy. Um, now, let me put the video. Yes, so that you can see who is speaking anyway. Um, I have a point uh, that have. Um, prepared to say, uh, like in our conversation, we said, what are the contemporary challenge for work in the digital age? If I talk in the terms of South Sudan, and also it says again, how do environmental issues such as natural disaster, 
or pandemic affect the job market? Um, a unique contribution from this presentation is to shed light on the differential effect of the fourth industrial revolution across the countries and regions, you know, around the world and more especially in Africa, and in particular in South Sudan. It's not quite different, but what we know is we have a couple of challenges that actually affect our environmental. Like uh, right now, we are talking on the digital age that completely depend on the technology um, that for. Sorry, uh, Kenneth, uh, Mr. Kennedy, I I lost you. Oh, okay. There is some instability on your communication, on your audio. Okay, I, I might clear. Am, am I clear now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Drawing on the wide range of international experts, contributors to this volume in this 2020 IJ forum, and examine a range of policy challenge arising from the transformation of work, of work in the digital age. You know, in South Sudan, when we look at the digital age, it's a little bit complex. As for instance, you know, as the pandemic came in, uh, especially by March, you know, everything was shut down. And though we try to encourage the digital ways of communication, but most of the community around the country, especially when we talk of the village itself, were not accessible were not having any access to communication uh, simply because of lack of knowledge uh, that hinder their development, that hinder the ways we can hear them, the ways we can hear their voice uh, and responded to. However, as we are discussing uh, the effect of labor destruction, natural disaster and pandemic, uh, raising level of wealth inequality, low social mobility, and the increase of regional disparities within and between countries. We need strongly to consider how and to unlock the vast economic potential of the new technologies and the implications for policy innovation at a different level, as governmental and societal levels, especially dealing with the community. So as today, our contribution here intends to inform the progressive agenda of how we can develop and share the narrative and solution across the range of advanced industrial countries and share our, our output with least development or developing countries, especially in Africa. So, as for the case studies of South Sudan, it's very important to look into it. As you, some of you might not, might notice or as know about the history of South Sudan. As South Sudan got its independence in 2009. And later on, you know, technology has become something that newly introduced into the country. And especially uh, many people doesn't know the value of technology, though it is mandatory to use technology for life. But of course, we, we look at it at this perspective that we need to unlock, to train and give them the value of technology in our society. Our contribution, as I can say in brief here, intends to inform the progressive agenda on how we can develop and share the narrative solution across the range of advanced industrialized countries, like for example, Europe and other nation countries which have so far gone deeper into technical know-how and they are developing because of the technology. It's also touched as upon the commission of how progressive movement and trade unions can contribute the ongoing policy debate about the future of work in the modern economy. Uh, and also it regards the opportunity, the opportunity 
threats and potential solutions that we need to identify and address some of the most fascinating and enthralling economics and social challenges in our time. So what I'm trying to put here is the South Sudan is completely down if we talk in terms of the technology. And if we need to put up like a South Sudan IJ to enhance this digital age for people down into the community to understand and see how beneficial that they can get into and make it a viable tool for development, we need to cascade our policy down into the growth level so that we can be able to enjoy at a dividend of this technology that we are talking about today, the digital age. And we can be able to give a lot on how the disaster, like a natural disaster, you know, around the world, you hear today that, you know, there is a natural disaster, like, you know, a floating, a water taking the whole community, like, for example, in war in our country, where people are being displaced. But what do we do as, as we discuss the technology, what what could be the solution, you know, that can come up, you know, to enhance, you know, Sorry, support. Kennedy. Sorry, Kennedy. Uh, we will have um, a special timing for you to share a recommendation Treasure, on policies come. Uh, next come. time. Wrong, come. Uh, I will, uh, please, uh, let me continue the issues. Thanks for, for sharing your initial thoughts about this uh, situation in South Sudan. And uh, we have, I have to remind you uh, all that we have three minutes, uh, three minutes to speak about the different issues so we okay. can have the timing for complete all the uh, expected questions. Okay, you are most welcome. Thank you. The next uh, subject is about uh, how is, is to try to answer about employers and employees. Do they have the conditions and skills to adjust to these new circumstances caused by emergency? What are the existing good practices? We would like to, to ask the representative from Colombia and IGF, Italian and Cameroon uh, to, to share with us these uh, these experiences, and uh, how do they see uh, the good practices in them? Please, uh, three minutes each, uh, share with us your thoughts. Uh, uh, let's begin with uh, Dr. Julio Cesar Gaitan Bojorquez from Colombia IGF. Julio, no te escuchamos. We, we can hear you, please. Could you check? Sorry. Your... Thank you, Eduardo. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Eduardo. I am pleased to represent the Colombian Governance Forum at this IGF. First, the right to disconnection is an issue that became relevant in Colombia within the framework of the policy of the quarantine. During this preventive isolation, we saw the growth of distance working modalities. In the case of Colombia, a bill called the Law of Disconnection from a Work uh, was introduced to change uh, the norms that regulate the telework in Colombia. This draft law seeks that the employer does not transgress the limits, the limits that should exist between the working day and the rest of periods licenses, permits, and or holidays, nor those of the personal and family privacy of the worker or public servant. The right, the right to disconnect from work incorporates the respect of related rights such as privacy, work, per work personal life balance, and worker self. In the Colombian context, characterized by a low rate of union uh, low rate of union membership membership an environment of labor labor instability structured under uh, the freedom of dismissal this important as 
uh, we must acknowledge that it is very difficult to, for workers to exercise the right to oppose linked, uh, like linked to their contract. Secondly, another, cha another challenge uh, derive, uh, derives from the working space and times in the distant work models. In Colombia, the public agency in charge of the public service uh, provided a non-mandatory conce concept on the obligation of public servants to belong to the groups of the WhatsApp as a part of their work responsibilities while the lockdown is taking place. The concept maintains uh, that the workers can not oppose to be included in a WhatsApp group if their immediate boss choose uh, this to be the channel to be connected to the office, to the office within working hours. However, this concept is against the previous judicial decisions that in the grounds of privacy protection, consider the message sent via WhatsApp or uh, to groups uh, as of a semi-private nature and therefore established uh, that the worker must, must agree to be part of the WhatsApp group in the work environment. Without this acceptance, the judges say it is unacceptable to impose to the workers their, their inclusion in the WhatsApp group in which their personal information will circulate to third parties. The discussion is, is still open. Thank you, uh, doctor, for sharing with us your uh, the position in the Colombia uh, experience about these opportunities uh, with the regulations that uh, may create a good environment for the people on teleworking or remote working. Uh, let's uh, invite Mr. Mattia Fantinati, member of the Italian Italian Pal Parliament, Parliament uh, to share with us their experiences there in Italy, please. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Ciao, Osvaldo. In Italy uh, is, is one of the, I think, uh, uh, in a, one of the first uh, country where the virus, where the virus COVID has really uh, widespread and uh, it's uh, changed our way of work and maybe forever and without internet in a country could have survived. And a couple of Italian best practices. One is one uh, we, uh, we built a sort of platform uh, uh, to meet the demand and the offer among the young people and business new initiative. So in activating these digital platforms that um, we share the demand and for new skills and the relating training. This is a sort of partnership between private, of course, is important and the public company. So I mean, institution. And it was presented during IGF Italy 2009, organized by the one, of, one of the MAG components is Bettina, is Constantina Castle that is here. And I would like to really thank you for her job. And another, another best practice is that uh, during the COVID-19, during the pandemic, we have a huge and a significant lack of a component for long respirators. And so a, a company, uh, create using uh, the 3D printers. So we print the 3D using an open source method and uh, with a network logic, of course. And so it, it creates a sort of universal production of uh, uh, long respirators for breath and modification of existing breathing equipment. This was very important and it saved a lot of life. Just let me just focus on one concept very, very quickly just to just to conclude, because I'm a member of the parliament, I'm a politician, most of our people demanding to me uh, uh, about uh, uh, the future of uh, our job, uh, what's happening, uh, what will happen after the COVID crisis. We don't know. We don't know yet. We don't know about the future. It's true that in the US, one kid at a primary school out of three will do a job that we don't know yet. And it's true that uh, have to admit that most of our job will be replaced by the robots. Of course, it is true, but it's also true that in some 
kind of uh, countries like South Korea, the number of robots is increasing as well as the number of empl new employed people so is increasing. So don't be afraid about disruptive revolution of technology. So what are the, priori the priorities of Italy? And really I'm going to conclude. The first challenge is to prepare the society as a whole. And it means helping all the citizens to develop basic digital skill, as well as the, the, the skills that are, that are complementary to digital. I mean, management skill, creative, critical thinking that cannot be replaced by any robot. Second, we need to focus on the effort to help the workers in jobs which are likely to be most transformative. Not we don't have to protect the jobs, we have to protect people. So it means we have to create a social protection, new, new legislation, new laws. And third, finally, we have to train more and more specialists in a new technology, in a new ICT, in artificial intelligence, in uh, machine learning, and that's it. So we have to attract as many talents as we can. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mattia, for sharing with us your, your experience in Italy. It looks very uh, innovative using open source 3D printing for, for industrial production from home. Um, now let's invite Mr. Eric Stefan uh, to share with us from Cameroon IGF his experiences uh, in order to, to address the issues related to the best practices affecting their countries. Please, Mr. Stefan. Okay, hello everyone. Thank you, Osvaldo. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to share uh, Cameroon practice. Uh, I represent Cameroon IGF. What I can say about the pandemic and uh, global, the, the global pandemic affecting uh, the world, uh, especially in Cameroon, well, what I will say, it's, it's a blessing in disguise. It's a blessing in disguise because we are developing countries and we are lagging behind. But this is an opportunity for us to embrace the digital revolution. It's a mean for everybody to improve their lives, for the country to improve the, the economy. So what we have been doing here in Cameroon, first of all, I need to say that the young people, the public in general, and you know, in Cameroon, the job, the job environment is mostly informal. So uh, people already were using digital means, OTT, uh, they were using uh, social networks to, 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 to do their daily activities. So with the current pan pandemic, uh, the Cameroon government, in order to promote social distancing, they uh, instructed more people, almost everyone, to use uh, remote conferences for meetings and electronic messaging as much as possible. So that's why I'm saying it has been a blessing in disguise because uh, before the pandemic, we were spending money to travel, to go from one city to another just for a meeting of one hour or two hours. And everybody can be done using Zoom or using Microsoft Teams. Uh, the other thing is we have some uh, governmental agencies like Antique which uh, they developed their own um, remote uh, conference tool uh, for the government and all the other administrations to use. The third thing is, as I said before, the young people, young people here in Cameroon are very innovative. They know about the technology. You know, the knowledge, uh, thanks to internet, the knowledge is very accessible to everyone. So we have young people here developing innovative solutions, uh, promoting local content. And it, it's very good for the country because uh, we have a very robust uh, uh, backbone, uh, telecom infrastructure. We are connected to four international submarine cables. So we, we have data capacity in Cameroon. And, but, and also we have a very vibrant uh, youth 
uh, developing um, uh, innovative services. But the first setback is financing. Those, those, those young people, those young entrepreneurs, it's very difficult to get access to funding. So here in Cameroon, we need to look on ways to better to better help uh, those young entrepreneurs. So, because they are the one creating the jobs. We cannot just rely on the government uh, for the government to provide jobs. We need to promote an entrepreneurship and we need to improve our financing practices. Uh, the, the other thing um, is uh, we have internet society here in Cameroon, I think in two weeks or so, they have a meeting to promote the internet usage to the, to the public, to tell people, all people, uh, business owners, or every, everyday people, how to use social, uh, social services, how to use uh, Zoom, how to use uh, Microsoft Teams. Uh, but what I can say is everybody is already using uh, OTT tools such as WhatsApp. WhatsApp is very, very popular in Cameroon, even in the rural, rural, rural uh, regions. So what I can say at the end is uh, global pandemic, uh, of course, it's catastrophe on, on the human side, but it's an opportunity for our government, for our leaders to, 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 they need to look at this digital revolution because that's the only thing that can push us forward. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Stefan, for sharing with us the experience in Cameron. It seems like uh, they have uh, innovation in their blood and they have found ways to uh, to strive in this moment when uh, so much needs to be done for uh, continued production. Now, I would like to, to open a discussion with a new subject. It's about the vulnerable groups. Who are the, uh, those and how to ensure not leaving them behind? This is an important question in a moment where uh, uh, we talk about the uh, divides on, on, uh, on gender, uh, we talk about youth, uh, we talk about uh, different uh, uh, barriers for different groups to, to access, to, to work, and to use these tools. Please uh, join me uh, to answer this uh, question uh, from Nigeria IGF, Ms. Uh, uh, Odufun. Uh, in order to, to share with us uh, her thoughts about this issue, please. Wow, oh, hello. Can you everyone hear me? Hello, yes, we can hear you. Okay, good evening from Nigeria. My name is Uchenna for short. Um, it's good to meet you all, and uh, I am very pleased to represent the Nigerian Internet Society. Um, thank you for your question, and uh, I've learned a lot from the panelists so far. Um, I work with the on the privileged community, a different technique, and uh, so I am from the private sector and I collaborate also with the public sector to, to do my work. So I have a little bit of experience with both private sector and public sector. And um, during the pandemic, um, we were very, 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 very affected the vulnerable communities because nothing was happening, absolutely. Everybody was totally confused uh, as to what to do because uh, the the um, so I um, I will, I'm I'm being asked to share my video so I'm going to apologize for this because I just had a baby two days ago and I am still 
in the hospital, but I have to do this um, program. So please do bear with me. I cannot share my video because I'm not in a very good environment. <laughs> Thank you for understanding. So um, when the pandemic uh, <laughs> struck us, we, we, we are confused of what to do because um, the people in the rural environment had no idea of what to do. They were stuck. So either they don't have internet or they don't have the material, they don't have an, a, a phone, they don't have um, laptops or computers to use. So, and when I, I also work with the um, urban communities where they moved on very quickly and the parents were able to provide internet, the youth were able to move on, they pivoted to a lot of things. But, and, and then I started advocating for the rural communities. What do we do to get those people on board, even after the pandemic? Because it seems that they will still be maybe 50 years behind when we move on to other things that we do. So what can happen? So we got access to lots of resources, um, internet, um, laptops and uh, other gadgets that we took to the rural communities for work. And we find out that there are a lot of things to be done. I mean, there are people that are totally out of the world that cannot be able to reach to where we are expected to be in the future. When you talk about the future of work, there are people it may not see the future of work. Can you hear me? So um, the vulnerable community- Is it unstable? Yeah. Um, is it better now? Yes, yes. Okay. So the vulnerable communities, um, the rural communities, we are left out and, and they know, the governments know, but they started working on, you know, when we start advocating, they started, you know, becoming faster with the work of, you know, um, laying fire, internet fibers, uh, trying to get some resources to these places, but there are lots of work to be done. So in the world we are today, we have two worlds. We have the world of the known and the unknown. And the unknown are those in the, in the rural communities who have no idea what we say about the future of work. They are just existing. And there is so much work to be done to reach out to those intelligent, smart children, youths out there. Then in the world of the known, there's the people that are privileged enough to know what is happening. We are also able to work with them from our organization as little as seven, eight years, we have started teaching robotics. We have started teaching artificial intelligence and we have created curriculum for schools to be able to you know, let them know what the future of work is and, not, and to get prepared right now. Because preparing for the future of work is not in the future, it is now. If you are not prepared now, you cannot be able to get to the future. So. Getting them prepared now is the priority of Edufon Technique because we don't want to be caught up in the next 10, 20 years. However, on the other flip side, we work with other some organizations like the US Embassy that promote and sponsor some of our programs to the rural community where we give them access to laptops and internet and introduce even basic computer skills, not only the digital skills, but basic computer management skills. Then the youth, we help them with entrepreneurship, entrepreneurial skills. We help them think about uh, solutions to the common problems they have in their environments. They come up with ideations and they come up with how to solve that problem. So we are on the track to see that the vulnerable communities are remembered and we give them access to resources, STEM resources that can help them for the future. Then on the other side, in the um, urban area, we are also 
helping to promote the skills for the future. And we hope that, you know, in the future, there, there will be a little balance through partnership, through networking, through advocacy, so that people in the vulnerable communities are not really left out. Because from our work, we have discovered that there are so many talents buried, so many ta talents are buried in the rural community because they don't have access. And we have proven that by taking some girls from this rural community to Silicon Valley um, two years ago, where they um, attended a competition and they were actually, they won gold medal from there. So from the village to Silicon Valley, because they have access. So if the world, not only in Nigeria, not only in Nigeria, if the world will look at giving access to children in vulnerable communities, to giving them access to resources, they, they, we will have a huge difference in the world. So not just in Nigeria, but it's all over the place where there are so many disenfranchised children and youths. And yet we are looking for youths that will take over um, the next thing happening in the world. And we are not giving the ones we have access. So we are looking forward to breaking those barriers more and more and I am happy that I had the opportunity to let you know what is happening here um, in, the, in our environment and the vulnerable communities. Thank you. Uh, uh, one, one, my, uh, could you repeat <laughs> just, the name? Just it use Uchenna. Uh, I'm sorry Uchenna for some... It's okay. You can use Uchenna. Okay, <laughs> Well, uh, we have to move on with uh, Mr. Sidney Obed from Haiti, who will share with us uh, the experience in their country. Please, uh, Sidney, could you join us? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Osvaldo. Uh, and hello, everyone. So uh, I have to thank you for the, the, the question uh, of I hope my English will be helpful. So I have I am is French speaking people a person. So uh, I I want to start uh, by uh, by speaking uh, about uh, AT situation. So eighty percent of Asian population lives below the poverty line. This gives an idea of how the majority of the population is suffering and even vulnerable. So unemployment stands at 40% and we are still suffering from the damage of the great earthquake uh, uh, 10 years ago. So, which caused damage estimated at uh, seven, more than seven dollars. So we we have women, we have uh, young people, we have people living in rural areas, and people with we do see mobility. So they are uh, the main groups of uh, people vulnerable to poverty vulnerable to uh, for a uh, digital economy or vulnerable for a uh, unemployment in AT. So th there are some great initiative initiative to promote of people with uh, with reduced mobility, but we need concerted actions for change. Uh, every group of vulnerable people represented in all institutions, in all political decisions, and they must be included in all debates regarding digital future. So we have some initiative uh, like train Asian women uh, to make them autonomous and put, uh, and put a part of themselves in order to surpass popular norms that exclude women. 
their their mentorship program in Haiti with women's organization that I like women and promote their inclusion. So it's up to step up and say what posi position they want in society. Uh, new digital jobs opportunities can uh, pro provide real life to the young people who make uh, up uh, the bulk of the Asian population. Uh, so the majority, the majority of Asian population is young. Many young Asian use social networks to create content and generate monthly income, and some adopt adopt the freelance work site instead. So uh, there, uh, there is an initiative uh, named IT Goes Global uh, from LACNIC. So it was a project to equip young people with digital skills that would not limit them to Haiti, but to the whole world to offer their skills and life better at home while getting out of poverty. For people in rural areas, AT need the availability or availability of service, jobs, modern infrastructure that will not require the citizen to move to urban areas. Uh, there are already projects, but they are far from sufficient due to the increase in the population. It is up to each group of people to claim their place in Asian society. And the state must ensure the inclusion of all citizens, uh, skills, uh, materials, access uh, to internet uh, are necessary for all. And it is uh, great news to learn that the World Bank has a, a Six, 60 million uh, dollar grant project for connectivity to accelerate Asian economy. So we we want uh, uh, to to see this project contribute really to the development of the the country. So uh, we we want to see all the people to to enter to the digital economy. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Os Osvaldo. Yes, Hope thank you, you, Cindy, for <laughs> sharing with us your... Okay. Uh, we are almost uh, out of time, so we would like you to ch share with us in a minute Eh? your concluding remarks, I mean, your recommendations in your actual state in order to uh, policymakers uh, to connect with and align new opportunities for, uh, for uh, create conditions and a good environment for these uh, challenges that you have mentioned. So let's uh, begin with uh, from down top uh, uh, to start with Mr. Cindy Obat, chairman uh, with us in a minute, uh, his recommendations uh, in order to uh, align uh, these issues we just discussed, please. Yes, so we, we want to to, we must have uh, more uh, women in in all sectors uh, of uh, uh, we want to include we must include in uh, all voice in uh, debate uh, like uh, of, uh, people in uh, we will always must uh, uh, have also their voice in or in our public forums, and uh, we 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 have, for example, a, a, some project like like a Smart Mom. We develop in AT chapter that they promote a, a, that training models vulnerable to poverty a, on the on mobile money revolution in the town of Cabaret in Haiti. 
So because they deserve the adequate financial and digital knowledge to to improve their living condition. So it, I think we we can we can do something like that. Uh, we need skills. We need the uh, infrastructure. Uh, so uh, we need the more concerted actions in. in between take stakeholder, all stakeholders, so it's all I, I, I can okay. I can add for 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 now. Thank you, Obet, for sharing with us. Now with a uh, Nigeria IGF, uh, Miss Edufon, please. I think I, I should say is Miss Uchenna. Edifon is the business name. So Uchenna is okay. <laughs> so um, what uh, we have been Sorry. working with uh, a lot of the policymakers to include um, some basic digital literacy on the in the in the curriculum. And uh, it's it's working actually. For the private sectors, we have been able to encourage lots of schools to um, accept some certain STEM um, programs in their schools, like the robotics and the AI we are teaching. Even though, like we say, we don't know what the future is, we have a glimpse, but yes, we need to be ready and prepared. And this is what we are doing. On the other hand, we pay very close attention to girl, the girl child and uh, we are not taking that um, very lightly. We, we take it serious. So the girl child um, on the STEM level, we take care of them. We make sure that the government also look into that and which the government is um, also complying by you know, providing some access to resources so that the girl child gets the adequate STEM education that is needed for them to try. So we hope to see the future where things get better and better um, for us. And uh, we hope that such meetings will continue over the time for us to share our ideas. Thank you. Thank you, Shanna, for sharing with us your thoughts. Mm -hmm. uh, from Italy, I would like to, uh, join, to invite uh, Mattia to share with us his commitment in uh, require for surpassing this uh, or creating the conditions and environment for the future of work. Yes, uh, about new skills, I'll give you some numbers. Uh, the numbers are important. In Europe, in 10 years, nine out of 10 of jobs, we need digital skills. And still in Europe at the moment, 44% of the population between 16 and seven and seven four years doesn't not have them. There will be 1.6 million job vacancies in Europe in 2025 due to lack of skill. First of all, we have everybody of us, everybody's, uh, the contract for the web says three important commitments, rights and duties, governments, and government has got rights and duties. I mean, connectivity and ability privacy, companies, rights and duty because internet is not for the government you have you you cannot blame just the government because internet is something that uh, is uh, from it, it's uh, everybody's thing for I any mean, governments companies right and duty so making the internet accessible respecting privacy making technology that improve lives for the company and for the citizen creators and collaborator robust communities and we have to fighting for the web. This is, you can do just in a multi-stakeholder platform like a, a IGF. And Italy will have, is, will be one of the first in the world to have, to, that will have in a few weeks a multi-stakeholder platform with an open and bottom-up process and program committee. That will be our future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mattia, for sharing with us your numbers and the commitment you you uh, you oversee. Uh, from Cameron, Mr. Stephanie Sido. Stefan Sido, sorry. Okay, thank you, uh, thank you, Osvaldo. 
for Cameroon, what do we need to do uh, about the new challenges? The first thing I agree with Nigeria and Italy, the first thing is to improve the human resources. So the technical, technical digital skills are needed in, uh, in today's market, in today's uh, job, job environment. We also need to improve our educational system our educational system needs, uh, needs to be uh, uh, disrupted. We need to add the new digital skills, artificial intelligence, blockchain. Blockchain is very good in this moment, IoT. So we need to improve our educational system because uh, like I said, this is the digital age and we need to be ready. Uh, the other thing is the increased use of ICT. We need to look at cybersecurity as well. We need to be better equipped for cybersecurity because cyber threats are growing and are causing damages more and more. So we need to improve our data, our cybersecurity tools. And we also need to, like in Cameroon, we don't have a data protection policy. So we need to work in, on uh, getting, putting in place a data protection uh, policy. And uh, the last thing, uh, a part of uh, infrastructure, we, we can improve our fixed broadband penetration because uh, the most use here is mobile, mobile broadband. If we can improve our fixed broadband, uh, it will be good for the whole country. And uh, like I say, lastly, we need to better uh, we need to better help those young innovators uh, provide financial aids or tax incentive for them to develop new application and new services. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Eric, for sharing with us. And uh, now I will uh, invite uh, a Julio to uh, talk about his action and recommendation instead of in representation of Colombia IGF. Thank you, Osvaldo. The digital acceler acceleration uh, brought by the pandemic reminded it reminded us uh, that the most workers in our societies were rapidly uh, brought to the virtual future uh, without any preparation. In this massive and fast digital, digitis, digitization, uh, even simple but massive day-to-day -day challenges are proof of power relations and privacy concerns that will only increase but there are other topics that need to be discussed locally, such as the challenges of artificial intelligence, the new capacities that the people will need in most digit digital uh, jobs, uh, the impact of surveillance, etc. Thank you, Valdo. Thank you. Uh, so let's go on with... Uh... Uh, Panama, Abdias, please. Hello. Yes, I will be quite fast and short my intervention because of the lack of time. Uh, Panama IGF and all its and all its multi-stakeholder members wish to express their commitment that is to promote that teleworking or remote working law in a human rights approach that ensures fair treatment with digital inclusion for workers and employers. This commitment will allow the incidents to the labor authorities with various mechanisms to ensure that the working population has a fair treatment. After the pandemic, many companies will continue to teleworking or, or being using remote work after knowing the benefits and that, the, that this modality uh, has through the use of digital devices. Our recommendation is that a telework or remote work law should have a gender focus. Women who remote work, who practice remote work, are the most affected in terms of stress levels and the little time to rest. They, con they continue to do housework, take care and, and education of children. So we promise uh, uh, we have this commitment to focus our efforts, especially on this topic. We already have public policies 
Now we have to put it into practice. Thank you, Osvaldo. Thank you, Abdias. Uh, Mr. Kennedy from South Sudan, please. Can you hear us, Kennedy? Are you there? I, 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 I don't see Mr. Kennedy in, so I will continue. Hello, Mr. Kennedy, with, can you uh, unmute your mic? You have muted right. your mic, so can you unmute your mic here? Okay, can you okay, hear me now? Kennedy, okay, yes, please. Uh, thank, you. Th thank you so much. Um, uh, no, I've not spoken about the employee or is uh, in this digital market or is something. Uh, our recommendation uh, from South Sudan is um, we need to look into the policy that foster uh, how we can cascade the development of this technology to down our community. It's very important, uh, especially during the pandemic breakout. Uh, most of our people did not have access to information. And it made it a little bit difficult for them to communicate, to express their view uh, towards what they face. Uh, in this case, I, I please or as I recommend that in a policy development should be shared across in a cut across manner, um, seeing how uh, African countries have been suffered, especially during this disaster, natural disaster and pandemic. You know, it has been um, a serious way of not finding the voice from the community. Uh, secondly, the, digi the digital technology has not been taking effect in South Sudan, I can assure you. We are still behind uh, the ICT revolution that changed life to digitalize or as making things happen easily. Um, we, we recommend that such kind of opportunities and potential need to be cast down and see how our common people can utilize it. Uh, we see that it's very important to march together and see where others are down that we can uplift them uh, to such a level where they can be able to access the information. However, uh, thank you for this uh, um, good time uh, to express um, our time, especially from South Sudan, in, especially in technology breakdown. Uh, it has been hard, but uh, of course, now we are catching up uh, we are trying to sensitize, giving awareness to our people on the ground to know the importance of technology at the moment. But otherwise, before, it was very hard. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Kennedy, for sharing with us. We now uh, are in the final uh, moments. I would like to uh, share some remarks from notes I've taken from the experience you have shared. First of all, we, uh, we would like uh, to uh, for people to create capacities in order to educate, to adopt uh, uh, digital skills, not from not uh, from grown ups, but from the beginning of their education. So it is important for all governments to uh, adopt policies in order to develop those skills. Another important issue is that in the way that people uh, ad adopt these skills, they have opportunities to be creative to be innovators, to be entrepreneurs. But the funding is usually oriented to, uh, to people with finances uh, and opportunities to reduce risk. So there, they have to be some kind of acceleration or um, uh, companies that create opportunities for those people to employ their talents and have the opportunities to, to uh, to be productive with their proposals. Another important issue is about the, the uh, implication to adopt measures uh, for um, 
for uh, gender, gender inclusion, no? gender inclusion. That's important issue because uh, all opportunities must be available for everyone. Nobody can stay behind. And in this way, we can uh, make them part of this issue uh, in order to make good uh, opportunities because they are the mother of kids and they are obviously multiplicators of this process. Another important mention I have I have seen is that the opportunity to uh, the uh, common uh, common act assets in the internet is good. Uh, we have seen experiences from Italy, for instance, or from Cameroon, that they can take from open source uh, uh, resources uh, to create this innovation and adapt them to their current situation. So this is digital skills that uh, create these opportunities for everybody to share. We have seen also three different uh, uh, axes or uh, 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 trends in this conversation. First of all, uh, one related to the the current the traditional uh, organizations uh, and their uh, migration to digital platforms. This is important, and we need regulation in order for people not not for uh, organizations to to provide those platforms, but for people to connect them eh, with using their energy, using their internet, using their resources in order to, to access that. That is not a, a traditional way of, of, of working. Uh, usually enterprises provide all the means for their jobs. Uh, but this is an issue that is inherited from traditional digital platforms that allow the opportunity for people to, to join with their own resources. But the legislation there must be must have to be worked out in order to create opportunities for everyone. And the third part is the local uh, platforms that allow people to find new jobs, but they have they need the skills in order to join these opportunities. These are different remarks I have taken notes from your different speeches, and I thank you for uh, the opportunity to moderate this panel uh, with so uh, enriching. Uh, points of view. I now give the word to Ms. Federica Tortorella with her final notes related to the rapporteur process. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, I apologize for not using the camera, but I'm still at the office. So I really apologize in case you, need, you hear some sounds. Uh, there is a lot of people around me. Uh, so uh, I really thank you all for uh, those uh, value uh, inputs you gave today. And uh, in general, we could, uh, I think in, in this case, uh, Osvaldo, do you need a, a quick resume? Or in any case, I have tw 12 hours to, to post and share it. Perhaps it could be a good idea to not uh, waste more time uh, in case you need to, to give more inputs. So I could send it to the to the email since I have a few notes, but I have to arrange it uh, qu uh, quite better. What do you think about it? Yeah, it's okay. Uh, yes, we have time for you to share your, the final remarks in order to share the documents. And also, uh, Anja has uh, have shared with us a link where people, where all of you can share your commitments related to the to these issues. No, uh, so please uh, use that. Uh, link in order to to complete the the information regarding to this panel. Uh, I think we are done. But uh, Anja, I don't know if you uh, think we have a moment, one or two minutes, for any final comment that may be provided from the panelists. Uh, thank you very much. I've really enjoyed listening to this very interesting session and good ending of the discussion workday. I, I would defer to the hosts. Maybe we could give two, three minutes just to ask if colleagues and participants have any questions to ask. I think it's a pity really not to allow for uh, inputs and I'm sure that many were puzzled and, and that they triggered the attention of many, the inputs that were shared by our colleagues. So maybe two, three minutes if uh, co-hosts don't mind. 
Oh, yeah. cool. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I see there. You can. You can take the. You can ask your questions by chatting or by uh, sharing the the mic if you would like. Any of the panelists may may have some final regards or. All right. So, um, we have a section where you can raise your hand if you have a question. Then we can keep you on the floor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, you can raise your hand if you would like to to share your thoughts in this manner. In the moment they they share and their their views, I can add some interesting point of view from Africa, where the need from a broadband with fixed uh, uh, connections is important. They they have a, a, an important issue there, but the trend is for using wireless connections that uh, that has been creating the opportunity for every people who have a, a mobile phone in their hands to to connect to internet. But the usually the the connection from home is a is a good choice for a for accessing important resources for uh, the, the investment on internet exchange uh, points ixps is important and also the 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 investment from governments in or from uh, private uh, telcos uh, to to invest on infrastructure no in communication in order to to help people to to progress um I see no no further uh, comments or, or or hands raised, but uh, I think this is opportunity to to close the 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 session, uh, giving not not without uh, uh, giving the thanks. Uh, thank you for uh, joining this panel for sharing your comments from Haiti, Nigeria, Italy. Cameroon, Colombia, Panama, South Sudan, uh, Dominican Republic, where we all from different countries, different continents, see different trends that are very similar in these challenging times. I see a hand from Mary Uduma. Uh, if you have this word, please uh, briefly share with us your, your Thank comments. you. Thank you, the, uh, the chair. Can you hear me, everyone? Yes, yes, Mary, okay. please. Um, it's been an interesting discussion and um, I, 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 I have enjoyed the, the, the experiences and the sharing information from all over the world, uh, from every region of the world. Um, when it comes to future, you know, uh, future work, workforce or work, future work, and the, 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 the new, the digital age, uh, one, as you have said, meaningful connectivity is very, very key since everybody is going online. So meaningful connectivity uh, is very, very important. So um, our people should also invest in broadband, as you said. Secondly, is that we, we the, 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 the need of retraining because uh, AI, you know, artificial intelligence and all the all other the new, uh, the new technologies that are being employed to do basic and mundane jobs that um, uh, the people used to do. There. So those that will not be, that will be out of job, what do we do? We need to retrain, uh, reskill, retool the skills, and uh, they could, uh, could also do, do some other things because there are, there are, there are, there are jobs that the, the, the robots will be taking over from the, from the people, whether it's in medicine, or in uh, in accounting, in law, in uh, in, uh, in, uh, in 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 uh, um, um, in in uh, uh, communications or or, or or media. So we we find out that the the robots and the artificial intelligence is being deployed. So the need to retool and reskill our 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 people and our, our, the workforce is also very, very important. Thank you, that's what I want to share. Thank you, Mary. Uh, I see Lucien have a, another participation and I think with this, we, we close the session. Please, Lucien. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the floor. It was quite an interesting session indeed. I just wanted to reflect indeed on the need 
for, for continuous education uh, during, you know, uh, obviously the first part of your life, but COVID-19 has shown us that we need to retool, as Marie said. And uh, I liked it, the, the remarks of, of a speaker saying that we, we actually need to disrupt the, the educational system uh, and be mindful, basically, of, of inclusion of the new digital divide that we, we can see in France. Um, in different regions, people have difficulties accessing internet and connecting, and basically, it's it, 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 well, it's it's a it, it's an urging need, and we need to we need to to do it now. That was that. Okay, thank you, Lucien, for for sharing your your thoughts. Yes, uh, I think we have we are in challenging times, requiring new uh, creative thinking uh, to develop new skills, to to create broadband connectivity, to create laws that protect people, and to uh, but first of all uh, to. Uh, allow people to access internet to have the connectivity required for continuing work in this process. It is surely a great technology that saves time of transportation from people who traditionally work presentially and now have the opportunity from their home to, to do their sharing. There are some challenges in, <laughs> uh, related to how long do we work, uh, the, the demand of work from, from in different moments in, in time, and the instant uh, the, the need from instant answering for, to, uh, to the different requests. But those are issues that are part of the change we are in moments where change is required from everybody, uh, we see we are challenging with this issue. Uh, thank you again, all of you, for uh, being with, uh, with me with, uh, in, the, in the panel. Thank you for Anja, the IGF, and the IGF organizers, um, the NRIs that have been representing their corresponding chapters. Uh, in order to uh, make this moment great. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Great panel. Bye-bye. Ciao. Thank you. Ciao. Bye, everyone. Bye. Ciao. Ciao. Bye. Bye. Adios, Bonsoir. amigos. <laughs> <laughs> adios, adios.